today I have the honor of presenting and introducing David to show us his artwork. Thank you very much. First, my apology because uh, I'm uh, French and uh, I learned English uh, very lately and so my accent is uh, is not perfect and sometimes I will use very bad format sentence. So sorry about that. And uh, in case you don't know, I'm streaming from uh, this little point here in France. So yes, the signal has to travel a long way and it's uh, already uh, the start of afternoon here. So if there is some people who are on the chat, on the Element on Matrix chat and want to share their location, uh, sometimes I, I like to see uh, if there is people uh, coming from uh, another region. And also it's good for me to check uh, the lag between reaction in the chat and my voice. So yes, if, if you can write some, some countries, for example, thank you. <laughs> and more precisely, here is my desktop. I took this picture uh, just five minutes before starting. And uh, I took it because uh, I know that I, I will have some question about my tablet. So my tablet of the moment, because I'm changing a lot, it's 20 years that I'm doing that that I'm doing illustration. And the right now I have a Intuos Pro Large. It's a vacuum tablet. And uh, yeah, that's all. And two screen, one for my entertainment, chat and references, and one for painting and working, the one in front of me. And of course I have cats, but maybe they will be behind me today, but they are cats, they do what they want. So, I wanted also to say that I'm the creator of the webcomic Pepper and Carrot, and uh, it, it's my main work right now. And I'm living with a donation for the webcomic on internet via Patreon, TP, and et cetera, et cetera. So this way you have uh, the big picture. And uh, today I wanted to, to make a painting demo and uh, with Krita, and Krita is a digital painting software. I'm opening it right now. Oh, I see say, uh, some uh, some some countries now. Honduras, Boston, France. Oh, Boston is a splendid city. I visited it this summer, last summer. <laughs> Germany, hey cats. Poland, hey, the lag is not really big. It's not really big because I see the, the message appeared three minutes ago. And today uh, I have only 50 minutes and it might sound like a big budget of time, but for painting it's not because a painting can get a duration of 10 hours or 30 hours. And uh, of course I don't have this time. So I will go very quickly and I want to start with a sketch I already done. So this is, uh, a classic sketch page with a little notation with random character, random expression studies, and I will paint this one. So, but uh, there is no composition, so I will just start to open a new canvas. I will go into the predefinite size and uh, start a uh, film in 16 by 9. It's a 4K document. And I will create a new document like that. I will tile my windows. So by default, Krita have tabs on the top, but uh, there is uh, in the setting a mode with sub windows like this, and this is the mode I like. And I will select the, the selection tool, just trace a little quick selection around my character. Ah, oh, someone in the chat and oh, it's, it's Petit Lutin, okay. I think I know who is. Uh, yes, it's the new brushes I shared yesterday. So uh, the brush I have here on my interface, it's brushes I shared for free yesterday on my social media, and, and you can find them to, to use them with Krita. And I will pass the character here, and I will try just to make a little composition. So not in the center, just a little bit, one third, maybe, because I have a slow time budget, I have to take quick decision. And 
yes, I think I will paint this. And I also gathered some references because references are good for inspiration. I took them from a website uh, with a copyright free. It's named it Pexel, and you can get a lot of picture on it. And I took some mountains for the background or time of the day. I'm really inspired by this. So this will be on my second screen. Uh, you will not see it, but you can uh, imagine that I will have them under my eyes to just to add some inspiration. It's not just copying the photo. I will make the shape of the mountain I want. Uh, I will just, it's just a taking example of what nature can do and what good photograph can capture. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, I, I remade the, I see the chat about the Creative Summit Freedom logo and I redid it. I did a little animation I, I share it on social media, but it's, it's not very good animation with them. So um, I have this character to colorize and it's a good opportunity to show uh, probably um, a feature of Krita. And uh, the feature is the colorize mask. So if you don't know the colorize mask, uh, it will allow me to color very quickly this character. I will right click on my layer. So my layer is just opacity and the, the dark line. And you see it's, it's, it's not even pure black line. It's an opacity line because I, I'm sketching this way. I will just save. If we have a crash or something, it can happen. Uh, Demo.kai, okay. And I will put a right click and I will add a colorize mask. So right click, add, add a colorize mask. And on my layer stack, I will reorganize that so you can see probably a bit bigger because my screen is, yeah is big, so maybe it's very little font on your screen. And I have the colorized mask now, and you can see that it's under the boy uh, drawing. And what I will do is I will pick some colors, like um, uh, maybe I will keep the, the blue uh, color sheen. So taking a brush, and I will just create some markers like that. Uh, I would just indicate to Krita, hey, I want you to fill this area with this color. So I'm painting on the colorized mask right now. And I will select a good skin color. And by good, I just mean for my artwork. Uh, do not put that out of the context. Um, so I go into the brown, orange, and I select a, a bright color. And I will not detail the eyes or anything. I just want Krita to paint the big mass of the artwork. So maybe I will continue on the Creative Summit color palette. And, and right now, I'm not really uh, thinking about what the final color will should be with the sun, with everything. I'm just thinking about what the color should be when the character is under like a neon light, like uh, a day with cloud and uh, just a gray color day. Uh, we can call that like a, a neutral, neutral, neutral day. And I can press control to color pick the color because I, I want the this part to be also uh, violet. The trotter, maybe this color, this color. I'm pressing control S. And yeah, right now it doesn't look like anything, but uh, as you can expect, there will be like a, a tada moment. And I hope it will be good. So, um, the colorized mask needs also a background. So I will do like for the movie in cinema, it will be green background that I will remove later. 
and I will select skin color. Here I have gloves, so more leather. Uh, this world, this world, maybe a golden one. Do 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 do. <laughs> like this like that and i think i have enough marker i can still add them later and fix them so it's not a huge pressure to not have them right i can press also e on the keyboard for erasing but now i have some uh, some color in place and uh, i try to just if you see on the colorized mask here under, there is a little wheel that, that is an icon on the colorized mask. And I will press that and Krita will start loading bar right inside the layer stack. So yes, computing, computing. It takes a little uh, time to just guess how to colorize this. And now I have a sort of preview mode. And in this preview mode, uh, it's a compromise to see the marker, to see what Krita guess about the colorization, I guess, and uh, the line art also. If you press the little pen here, you can have a preview of what was painted automatically. So this is very convenient. I have here uh, some yellow I could put, and I have here some green I could put, but the the other part, like this, maybe I could fix that manually later. It's probably faster. So I'm going back into my edit mode. And I will pick green color here, maybe blue here, and a bit of yellow here. This world also, this world wasn't well paint. And yeah, we can go into detail, but be careful. Don't be too perfectionist with that because you can spend more time than actually fix it by yourself. And I will launch another set of computation. So yeah, unfortunately, the colorized mask is a bit slow, but not enough slow to get a coffee cup. So sometime on a comic page, you have to wait. Mm. It's already done. So, hey, not bad. So when the colorized mask is, uh, is set like that, and I like the result, I will just click right click on it and convert that one to a paint layer. I don't want this thing to be um, like a dynamic and add some uh, marker and everything. I want to convert it to just pixel that I can tweak. So up, I click this convert to paint layer. And now you can see I have a normal paint layer under my line. Yoo-hoo. So this green screen is horrible. And I will pick the magic wand, select it, and we will remove that. Good. Now I have my character on my gray background. And I will do a little save incremental version I see the time. OK, 15 minutes. Good job for 15 minutes. And I will paint now the background, because the background will lead the atmosphere of the artwork. And I want a pretty moody uh, atmosphere. So the character will be like a flat cell shading right now. Boom, I will just paint. I press V on the keyboard while painting just to make big line like this. And I took a big preset. And this will be my sky because, yes, I have like a view angle. Uh, I think the horizon line is even maybe like that. Yeah. And uh, maybe we can get some epic mountain in background. Probably like that. And 
I'm looking at my reference right now. Because there is this color that looks like if the mm, like if it's the end of a, of a very special afternoon or something. Okay. And I also want some snow on this mountain. This mountain is not really big. I want something more epic like this, maybe, yeah. And for the snow, I will use some textures. So on my new brushes uh, that I share, I have a lot of uh, funny texture, I'm just creating a new layer. And I will try some snow. Oh, this one, for example, you see, does some crazy stuff with, wee, like that. Uh, and and it's good just to, to, to show that I want some uh, accident. This is the, the, the word that I'm looking for. I have this one that does like a canvas texture. You can see probably with a zoom like that. And this will help to, to give like a, a painterly accent. <laughs> I, I, I'm just browsing quickly the chat at the same time and I see th some references to a universe from a famous brand of of video game console <laughs> yes but he has blue hair so it's not him but yeah, of course, I was very influenced by, by all this imagery when I was a kid. And I continue to be because what they do with this large team and the very good designer they have, it's uh, just amazing. Just So I start to have some something for the background. It's still a bit flat and I would like to pop a massive uh, light on it just that will give the direction for my character so I will open a new layer and I will put this one into luminosity shine SIE uh, that that's uh, a blending mode and you can find it on the lighten category here and yeah this blending mode is magic just select a color of your light you paint and you have just light. And, and it works very for, for all the color, but I like uh, the, the light is very uh, believable, in my opinion. <laughs> Maybe other painter will, will dislike that. And I will smudge this light just a bit like that. So maybe the mountain is not uh, back the light because the light is in the space <laughs> and I will just erase from the light source the mountain so the mountain now is a uh, is in backlight backlight I'm not sure I have some little accident here I will just create a new layer on the top and just clean up the edge so my mountain, I don't like the shape. It's a bit classic. It could have more interesting edges. Of course, I'm running with a tight budget, time budget. But while I'm doing the, the, the painting of the background, if there is some question, I can try to answer them. So what I'm doing right now is uh, layering. So I have some brushes that are here in the color teal and here in the color green that are specialized into adding some texture and glazing some texture. And uh, when I add some texture, I sort of override the texture. And when I glaze, I just put another layer on the top uh, of brush stroke. And what I'm trying to do with doing that is, is 
trying to to get some brush stroke visible, but trying also to get some rich uh, texture, sort of uh, texture in my background. Uh, I like the fact that we can see like some, some sort of snow, but I don't like right now that uh, as soon as it, we are in the shadow, it's totally lost and we can't see anything. So I would like just a little reference here to that shadow. And I'm starting to take a lot of distance with my pixel image that I like. Uh, for a reminder, I will show it. It's here. So I'm in a very, a little bit more acid color palette. And uh, I also wanted to, to take another. All right, we have a question. Ah, good. All right. So how long have you been using Krita? What are your favorite features? And are there some features you wish to have in the future? Oh, uh, I will start by the last question uh, about the feature that I would like. Uh, there is plenty and uh, the developers know them because I'm very communicative about them. So I, I open thread on Krita Artist and speak about that. I open a uh, often thread on uh, uh, on the bug report and flag them as feature request. So yeah, I have I have a lot of things open, but uh, I know that Krita is also like uh, now a very very big software, and uh, they have some priority before adding my feature uh, that are uh, greater. So I'm just waiting patiently and. Uh, that's totally okay, but for example, one that I would really like uh, is a way to transform just a drawing like uh, this one of the boy, uh, right click and get uh, a color directly, transforming it into blue, for example. Just sometimes you have to redo a sketch and uh, you, you can do that already. You, you have to go to filter, transform the color, put them into background, but Sometimes you just want something non-destructive that you can right click and say, OK, this is a, a preparatory drawing or a sketch, and I want this to be blue temporarily, and just to retrace on the top. And after that, you can still uh, put back the blue or, or the color. And uh, yeah, this is a feature that I, I would like for long. And uh, I know it's in, it's in the work, it's in background. Uh, th there was already tests for the performance and everything. And, I already tested. Oops, I'm I'm painting on the wrong layer now. <laughs> uh, for the first question, how long uh, I've been uh, painting into Krita? Uh, uh, probably since now, uh, blah, 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 13, 14 years, 14 years, 14 years maybe. 2009 I started, so yes, 14 years. Uh, I started uh, at a very early time, and uh, uh, it was on, only on Linux, and uh, there, there wasn't a lot of user back then. <laughs> Probably uh, a, a little team, but a lot of very motivated developers, and I'm very proud of all the way that was done uh, along the years, uh, and all the work and all the dedication. That, that's amazing what Krita in 10 years became now. Uh, you, you can see it. Uh, for me, it's uh, like a second nature for, it's my tool. I love it. <laughs> and the second question, can, can you remind it to me? What are your favorite features? Oh, my favorite Krita features. Oh, there is too much. Too many. Uh, I will continue to paint and uh, I will think about it. Think about one that I find wow or something, and uh, I will uh, I will show it. Uh, for example, just one feature that I like right now, uh, and it's good because uh, we can continue on this character with that. Uh, it's uh, one that Madeline uh, Madeline Peck uh, she she showed a. Uh, a presentation uh, about the Fedora wallpaper. I invite you to watch it. It's in a replay uh, with the Inkscape conference also, very good conference. And uh, 
she introduced the the clipping group of uh, Krita. So here I have my color, for example, of my character. And if I press Control G, I will create a group with it. So I will rename it character. Do -do. And this one flat, because this is my flat color. And um, if I paint on the top now, you can see that all my brush stroke will uh, go outside of the character. But if I go here on the little A, that is the inherit alpha in the layer stack, um, all the layer with this little A on the top of this one will get the same transparency at the bottom one. And yeah, if maybe it's a classic feature for a lot of uh, painting application, but it's usually not done the same way because here you can see that I have one that is outside. But if I put on the top one that is in inherit alpha, it can now uh, go back and inherit uh, the one of, of the, the bottom. So there is something a little bit more complex with what you can do with groups in Krita that I really like. I also really like something that I don't find a lot of occasion of using, and it's the ability to clone things in the layer stack. So you can, for example, um, and uh, here I'm entering a dangerous uh, <laughs> dangerous feature because it's a add a clone layer. So I'm cloning this group, this layer maybe of this character because I can't clone a group. But now if I paint on it, you see that it's painting at the same time on, on the flat color in the next to it. So this, when I, I gave a course about uh, about uh, doing mock-up for video game when you have some pixel art and you want to repeat it and you want to update only one tile and all the one update on your screen. This is a very powerful tool. I had a lot of fun with that. So there is a lot of like hidden treasure like this in Krita. And uh, yes, uh, that are totally advanced, totally to even in comparison to the other uh, proprietary tools. I will awesome. think if I have uh, if I have more. We have more questions now too. So okay, how do you respond to people who say real industry artists need Adobe if they want to actually get a job and make things? Oh uh, yeah, I think uh, there is a sentence from yesterday from Ryan. I think we say that it's a chicken and egg problem. And uh, I, I really like it, this expression because, yes, school teach Adobe, so professional use Adobe, and professional use Adobe, so school teach Adobe, for example. And uh, yes, it, it's really hard to break the loop. But for example, this morning, I, I made some course for um, a school in France, active design. Uh, and uh, it, it was a course with Krita, so there are a school that uh, that likes using also something else or introduce or making one hour or so of something else because um, using Krita, for example, as a freelancer can be a huge advantage because uh, if you have some local clients, uh, they can install the software for free and you can share their, the source with them uh, and uh, they can reuse, for example, your work. Uh, so if you use Adobe with a local client, for example, uh, a little uh, bakery or something for their website, something, uh, they will not have to, have, having to pay a subscription is, is a bit uh, a lot for them, I guess. And uh, yeah, yeah. I do I, I do react when other people say to me that uh, uh, these software are more professional. I, I say it doesn't matter. It's uh, it's what on your portfolio that matters. Uh, a, a big company uh, will hire you and don't care about what you are really using. As long as you have good quality, 
and you work fast and uh, you know how to deliver to respect uh, the the constraint to respect uh, uh, to listen to everything uh, what the tool you use it's it's the i think it's it's the last of their problem <laughs> i think uh, your personal hygiene uh, or something if you work on a <laughs> uh, with other uh, with other person for example is more important <laughs> even than the software you're using um, because I totally by agree the end, with you <laughs> <laughs> because by the end of the day um, it, even in, in 2d especially in 2d i think but by the end of the day the it's only pixels and pixel layer red as a stack and, and it's it's quite easy to share to all the the, to to all the other tool right now. For example, Krita has very good uh, uh, PSD support to save a Photoshop file. So if you work with people using Photoshop or other software, because other software usually have also PSD support, uh, you can collaborate. There is TIFF, multi-layered, but uh, for there is many solutions. Nice. Okay, we have another question. <laughs> yes. Um, this person says, I started using Krita just this week. What are your suggestions ah. for those who are just starting out? Um, so behind the, 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 I just started Krita this week. Uh, it can be a lot of situation. I will just continue uh, continue to answer this question just after because now I will just set the character just to, to shade. And um, I will just put my line, I will colorize them. So I went to the adjustment of U saturation and value. It's control U. Uh, and because the, the black line were a little bit too... Uh, too strong, too bold in my in my in my taste. So I transform them right now into something a bit uh, browny, like brown ink, like this. Maybe it looks better. And I will put another layer that I will call shading. And for this shading, I will use one of the techniques that I really like is to put a mid gray. So 128 or 127 because uh, RGB is on 255. So the middle is uh, one or the other. There is no clear middle. And I will pick this gray and I will fill this layer shading with this gray. And I've used just the hard light blending mode. And the hard light blending mode is transparent with gray. And I will ask to inherit alpha. So now I'm exactly uh, how I started. But when I paint something darker on this uh, layer, it will shade. And brighter, it will light. Um, and this is very convenient because I will show you why. Because I can take a big airbrush now and decide to make my character more uh, blending with the scene. So shading the same color than the mountain. And picking up this light here, and starting to to light him a little bit. So about the question, uh, now I will just continue because now I have all this color you see in place that are good. I have a good uh, light that is uh, like my, my mountain. I have my good shadows. Um, I, I could probably do another little light source bluish that comes from uh, the sky because when you have a, a sunset like this in front in on the other side it's blue so you have a sort of bluish light source that come and um, I can go pr probably darker especially where the the object touch other So I'm doing that with a very non-interesting brushes. It's an airbrush, 
but I will spice it later. This is just to get quick mix on the canvas, like this. And now I can also pick color. So if I have an interesting shadow here, I can do Control Alt plus click, and this will sample only the color of the layer. So I have this layer, and I can sample the color of my shadow. And now I can use a more interesting brush to get some more sculpty or sculpt effect. And this is where I will spend a little bit more time, and I can answer the, the question. So for someone who started uh, Krita this week or last week, I don't know if it means it started or she started to also draw this week. Because Krita, in this regard, is a bit like for a writer, a word processor. Uh, you can learn a text editor very quickly. Uh, I think in, in two or three days, you get the big basics and you can uh, start to type what you want, make a book, make multiple pages, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But creating a story, creating characters, writing all of this can take a lifetime on you, uh, for the skill. So someone starting Krita and uh, trying to get, uh, I don't know, very big, beautiful CG artwork directly, uh, yeah, you, you can take 10 years. And it's not the fault of Krita, because Krita, you can learn the basic uh, layer, picking color, picking a brush preset, and starting to paint. Uh, when, when you understand this, that, and that, and the filters, just some effect to add some blur, uh, moving object, just what you paint, selecting object, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's it's rather quick to learn Krita. I once made a one day big introduction to probably all the feature in Krita. That was a very boring talk, but it's possible. You, you, you can start with all the menu and in one day. But uh, the brain can't handle all of that. Uh, you, you, you can handle the, the talk one, one day, full day, and, and listening to that. But you can't remember everything. Or if you can, uh, wow, not me. I'm a redfish in a bowl. <laughs> I can I can just learn two or three things at a time. And, and I'm very proud <laughs> when I do. Because drawing is it's that. It's a, one day you, you'll get a new thing that you learned about composition. And you see that it works for you. And it works for the art you want to make. And this tip, you, you will practice, practice, and it will become second nature. And then you will move on to another thing. And uh, anatomy can take a lot of time like that. Getting better clothes, getting better view angle. But there is so many things you can learn that is not really the interface of Krita. And you can also start learning all of that on paper with a pencil. Nice. So, yeah. So, someone that who is. Uh, with proficient with a pencil and, and already no shading, no everything will open Krita and, and will in five or 10 minutes, I'm sure, be able to make a good artwork. Uh, here, oh. for, yeah? Oh, go ahead. No, no, here I'm just saying that uh, I, I, using a feature like blending mode for shading, it's like big short, shortcut just to save a lot of time because. Uh, you can see that I'm like speed running this artwork. <laughs> nice. Um, we have more questions, but I wanted to note on that last one, like I like to compare, you know, drawing skills to leveling up in like a, a video game. If you're a video game player, <laughs> like at the beginning, it's really easy to kind of make breakthroughs and you level up quickly, but you know, as you go, you have to put in more and more hours to, you know, push through and make breakthroughs. I mean, that's oh, kind of yes. how I've looked at it. I've been drawing since I was a young girl. So 
Um, oh yeah, good. It's just that, took, that's very accurate. Years. <laughs> your, your feedback is really accurate. <laughs> and the more you grow and, and getting a breakthrough is more and more difficult. But yes, it's like leveling in, in video game. When you are uh, at a high level, the video game, yes, for sure. You, you need to, to start big campaign to get a level up or something. <laughs> yes. Yes. You got to put a lot of hours in. All right. So I have another question for you. Good. Uh, what is your opinion on copyleft art licenses? Ah, oh, copyleft. Uh, so all the open art licenses. But copyleft means uh, also the ones that are recursive and stay uh, in the as as open material. So for example, you have uh, the j just to be sure that we share the same definition. Uh, you have all the public domain that are not copyleft because uh, it's it's material that you can copyright after, uh, even if the source remains always uh, public domain. If you do a derivation with the source, you can make your uh, your derivation uh, copyrighted. And copyleft listens are listens that are. Eternally, you, you need to share a like. That's why the one of the main the Creative Commons share a like copyleft license is named share a like because once you share your artwork with this license, it all the derivation, all the modification made by other people can only stay with the same type of license. So my opinion about that is um, they are great. Uh, I have a, uh, not the majority of my artwork on copyleft. Uh, the majority of my artwork are on Creative Commons attribution. It's a uh, it's a little bit more permissive because I'm not asking the derivation to be uh, uh, also under copyleft. Uh, but I really like I really like I think it's great. Uh, just because uh, I, I'm not using them because. Uh, before working on a webcomic that is uh, under free and uh, libre license, but not copyleft, um, I worked into the uh, publishing book industry. So for example, I know that a publisher, uh, a French publisher, for example, needs to get uh, the constraint of getting his own cover, book cover, because it's, it's a sort of a, uh, a way to identify is publishing. So the derivation needs to be uh, locked on his side. Uh, the artwork for the cover can be open, but the title or, or the way the title is put and the color and everything has to be something that he can protect along the ESBN number and along something. It's just for the market. It's just how the market is designed right now. It's not something that I appreciate. I'm. Uh, I, I wish it wasn't existing like that. But it's like a pragmatic choice on my side because if I wanted uh, my webcomic to be published as a book, uh, I knew uh, that I had to compromise on that a little bit to be more compatible with the industry, and I'm also compatible with the free and liberal world. So uh, I, I tried that ten years ago. And I get the both of the best of both worlds, but yeah, sometimes I, for sure, I regret. Uh, I, I prefer sometimes that uh, all the derivation of my webcomic Pepper and Carrot would be uh, free, libre, uh, and open source. But if I want also video games, uh, a free, libre, and open source video game project, it's really hard to make a, a business model with it. Uh, I'm more likely to get derivation. Uh, for a web co for a series, uh, an animation or something that is propri proprietary. So leaving my artwork with a uh, non copyleft, uh, yes, was uh, one of the compromises I made to hope to get maybe that, and it worked because the series has already some derivation like that. So sorry, uh, I, I also read also for non compilest <laughs> question. <laughs> no worries. I think that context is important. Uh, so we have two more questions and about yeah. like 
a little bit less than 15 minutes. So let's see if we can get to them. So yeah. someone has a question about pepper and carrot. Yay. Um, <laughs> well, sort of related. Uh, when will you move on from the current series or add another like the one you've been drawing right now, maybe? Um, someone says <laughs> they work for free on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> um, yes. Um, so the ah, uh, this is. I, I know that once I will move away and start to story tell something else than pepper and carrot, and uh, you probably saw me uh, playing with that recently because I, I started a, a sort of uh, experimentation uh, process. Uh, the last three months, uh, trying things, but I, I saw that once I'm trying to, I'm starting to get uh, more affection to other characters than my main, than Pepper and Carrot and uh, the Old Witch. Uh, I start to create another universe directly, and um, if I start to get my focus, attention uh, on it, uh, more developed, uh, that might be the end of uh, pepper and carrot and i don't want i have still um i i still have a lot of affection for pepper for carrot and i still think i need to get a good closure like a good end and close the door of all the storytelling i started with them so um that's the conclusion of my three or, th or four months of uh of work on it uh is to say that uh, yeah I, I, I'm planning to to do some artwork sometime like that uh, that are not timid uh, on pepper and carrot just to to refresh myself just to to do something else like uh, all the artwork I do for freely project uh, for Framasoft for example uh, peer tube uh, mobilizon uh, all of these are artwork that uh, allows me to just take a breath outside of pepper and carrot because yeah, next year it will be ten years of pepper and carrot, uh, and ten years for a web comic is. Uh, I, I don't believe it myself. Uh, I thought that a web comic had uh, like five years of uh, duration of life expectancy, <laughs> and uh, yes, ten years for pepper and carrot soon. Wow, and uh, I I really want to to make a, at least a five uh, a number five book to the series. That will be uh, bringing Pepper to the uh, to the ending of something, and uh, then she can uh, probably continue to live in into many uh, into many fan fiction. Maybe <laughs> there's probably a plethora of fan fiction. Well, thank you for the answer, <laughs> um, and I totally understand. Get attached to to those characters. Okay, next question. Mm -hmm. um, any recommendations or tricks for using Krita to color fairies? So a little background is my daughter is interested in coloring fairies and is new to Krita. So this person is looking um, for tricks and tips on making a drawing look magical. Ah, okay. So um, if I add fairies on this artwork, I will go to copyright infringement because a little boy with a sword and a little fairy is flying around <laughs> is a uh, it's too many fun elements to start to 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 get uh, something but let's say he has a little glowing dragon that's not a fairy <laughs> and uh, I will show you the the technique so I will paint here above his shoulder like that um, a character like that so the, the first thing you want when you start to paint magic is playing with blending mode. And you have here on the lighten a long list. And there is two that are very popular among digital artists. Uh, the first one is Color Dodge. And uh, the second one that is popular just by me, I think, it's the Luminosity Shine side tool. Because uh, Color Dodge is popular because of Photoshop. Photoshop just has a little list like that of blending mode. Uh, you see Krita as, I don't know, I don't know how many hundred of them. It, it doesn't fit on the screen. It's, uh, but on the lighten category, 
you will get like this one, Luminosity Shine. And if you paint with this one and, and with a low color, so I will make the mine blue, for example, you'll get directly this type of glow. And as soon as you go a little bit higher key on, um, when I say keys, it's color like this. You will get some some feeling of light. It, it works better in a set in a setting, an environment that is dark. Of course, if you start this on a white page of paper, it will not work. So, for glowing things, uh, there is some smudge brush. They are usually painted in white on the preset of Krita, and you can smudge to get to get just a feeling of glowing. And on the top of this, so now I have my, you see, it's like a, a stain of light that I can move everywhere. And, and you'll find many little brush, for example, in all here, uh, that are preset with little stars. Uh, little stars works perfectly for magical stuff. I will zoom in just just so you see, and and you can because it's light and the camera receives some light, just add some little bit of glowing on the top. Okay, and then you can draw your creature made of light on the top. So here we say that it's a little like dragon. like a serpent, a snake serpent. Oh. <laughs> Pardon my French. <laughs> and with wings. But now we have something in movement on a statical illustration. Uh, so I will probably take a brush just to make some motion blur. And yes, this is really done quickly, but with a little bit more of care and attention, I'm sure you can make some believable fairies and magic and uh, sword in fire and everything. <laughs> I'm back to the shading. If there is uh, another question on the last 10 minutes. People are commenting, uh, so cool to take to, uh, to see this take shape and so quickly. Um, <laughs> so, oh, and someone says, oh, whatever ch you choose for pepper and carrot will support you. Oh, that, yeah. thank you very much. Because yeah, I had I had a very a period with a very uh, a low energy and uh, yeah, you probably uh, the, the the little community of pepper and carrot probably felt it and, and yeah. I had to pump back energy, so but I, I feel better now. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. You know, I think the last three-ish years has, you know, sucked some energy out of all of us. <gasps> oh yeah, and and there is also a lot of hot topic in art actually, with the AI, AI uh, image generation. Uh, with the NFT, and uh, there is some community uh, mess with Twitter, and with all of, all of this was so tiring for me. Um, it's disheartening. Also, sometimes you know you got to take a a break from creating because you, you're always putting yourself out there. So you have to, you know, take care of yourself, be inspired. Mm -hmm. Take a breath, rest, and then you can come back with some new energy. Yes, exactly. Well, uh, if anyone has a last minute question uh, for David, feel free to drop it now. We are closing in in the last couple of minutes here. <laughs> so I will move for the last step because yeah it's not a very detailed shading but you get the picture of how i did that and now i have this color of the hair that is uh, like a, a blue teal and this color can't really happen in an environment with this color uh, 
uh, it's just mathematical and it's a little bit too contrasty. So I will add on the top of the layer a filter layer. And the filter layer, I will uh, ask for a color balance. The filter layer will be a filter on the top that will just put all the color on the same page. And for the shadow, uh, I want deep red shadow. So you see that, wow. But I, I will go subtle because you can really uh, break an artwork with this. Uh, the mid-tone, I will go probably a little bit of orange. So orange, it's a little bit of yellow on this side and red on this side. Uh, this is too much. Yeah, a bit yellow like that. And for the highlight, definitely yellow. <laughs> like that and i press ok so now i have my adjustment layer on the top for all the color and that boosts a little bit the that blend the color all together so it's a little bit too much saturated so i will just lower the opacity of the adjustment layer you can do that so you can make the effect to zero or to 100 percent so if it's too strong you can still put it little back like that and I will finish with another filter layer. Up, add filter layer. But this time I will take curves. Curves, curves, it's color adjustment. But I name it all the way curve. And here I will just boost a little bit the contrast because I see that um, there is still a lot of thing that is not uh, touching really the, the dark dark point. So this RGB curve also adds some saturation and I don't want saturation. I always forgot about it. So I, I will just set the, the curve to lightness. And, and now I have a little bit of um, deepness in the illustration for the blacks. And just a little bit of writing. Mm, maybe like that maybe like that i'll just turn off and on uh, yes you, you, you. probably not visible with the live streaming but it's just root a little bit the illustration uh, for the dark and um, last because it's 29 I take a big airbrush on a multiply layer and just do a little vignette effect and this is just replicating a camera effect that make the edge of the picture a little bit darker. And it helps to get attention to the center of the picture. Just before, after. And yeah, that's finished. <laughs> Thank yeah, you no very much for watching. <laughs> I just take advantage to show this if you want to follow me on social media or on my website and uh, continue the discussion on private message or on the chat, I'll, I'll be around. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, David. This was great. I learned a lot and we had some really um, awesome questions and uh, we're going to stop the live stream for now and we'll be right back with SAPTAC. All right. Bye. Thank